What's up, boys and girls? It's the guy Radical, and today, promotion uh, alert. Wait a second. What's that noise? Promotion alert. Oh no. Wait a second. Promotion alert. It's. It's. Promotion alert. Check out this freaking awesome Radical merch. Look at this. Look at the stitching in this. Look at how nice and beautiful this sweatshirt looks. Check out the back, the beautiful Radical on the back. Check out this beautiful hoodie. You can check this out on Radical's Discord or in the N10 Discord if you want to purchase one right now, today. You can do that right this very second. So do, your, do yourself a favor and buy the Radical merch. Ah, good old Lukey Poo. Anyways, as I was saying, today I want to delve into a debate of two of Nintendo's top franchises. And you know, bicker over which one of them is superior. These two top Nintendo franchises I speak of are none other than Pokemon and The Legend of Zelda. For those of you who know me, clearly I know hardly anything about The Legend of Korra. I, I mean Zelda, Zelda. Uh, so, I'm going to be fighting for Ash Ketchum's honor. To stand up for the other franchise, I am joined by fellow YouTuber, Lazified, who will be fighting for Princess Zelda's dignity. Introduce yourself, bucko. Hi, I'm Lazified. I hate Wii Banime, and it's an honor to finally be doing a video with Raddy. Now, before we begin, make sure you check out Lazy's channel as he streams just about daily and is a real bro. You're missing out if you don't know about that white man. So in order to pit these two franchises against each other, I guess we're gonna have to focus on specific aspects of the game. You ready to dive in white guy? Yeah, I'm ready, sir mio da de caramelo. How about we start with the story of both franchises? As the guest to my channel, you go first, Mr. Hombre Blanco. Me? Go first? Damn, Mans wants me to end Pokemon's whole existence in the first segment, but I. The message and plot of the Legend of Zelda series varies from game to game, but I will roll with Ocarina of Time for now. In Ocarina of Time, Link traverses time seven years to confront the great king of evil Ganondorf. After winning the battle, Link returned to his original time to warn Zelda, the Princess of Hyrule, of what the future would bring. Through all this, the timeline splits in three. Fallen Hero Timeline, Child Timeline, and the Adult Timeline, all of which have different events occur. Yeah, not gonna lie to you, Chief. That all sounded like you were speaking Chinese to me. Zelda's story sounds complicated as shit. Sure, you know what you're talking about, but let's get to the real nitty gritty here. Pokemon keeps it simple while also leaving an impact. You start out poor as shit and leave your mother, you know, to explore a world all by yourself, as like a 12 year old kid, and by the end of the game you're sitting on a royal throne having conquered every single last person in the entire region. You know, this was every kid's dream to set off on their own and make a name for themselves, especially while training Pokemon from little weak shits to absolutely juiced on steroids specimens. Personally, Stories from games such as the Black and White series hit hard, you know, since they're all emotional and shit and withhold amazing character development for the characters that make up the story. Every game has its own twists and turns, and the respective legendaries to each of the franchise's titles present a centerpiece to the plot of the tale. In short, Pokemon got a simple story with a lasting impact. Aight, so next up is characters. This time, I get first dibs. Pokemon has iconic characters throughout the franchise. You know, from the Pokemon themselves, such as Pikachu, Eevee, Charizard, and so on and so forth, to the people such as Ash Ketchum, Professor Oak, Jesse and James from Team Rocket, and you know, the hundreds of newer characters getting announced year by year. Now entering Gen 8 with the release of Sword and Shield in November, there are thousands of Pokemon to name and catch. I know Zelda ain't even come close to that number of characters in their games. Also going back to Pokemon Black and White, you know, my favorite Pokemon game of all time, we have to highlight Lord N for a second. Coming from a story with the Seven Sages, led by Lord Getsus, and an ending unlike any other Pokemon game where the final championship battle is basically sabotaged, 
Lord N is one of the most underrated gaming characters of all time. His character development was out of this world and how he flips from bad guy to good guy repeatedly had my emotions spinning. Pokemon knows what they are doing in the character department. Nah, Link can't go out on an adventure at age 10 after his parents were killed in a war, save the world and become legendary, never to be forgotten or anything, especially after like not first being liked by anyone or having any friends. Oh, right, um, characters. Wow, it's all Pokemon has to offer. Seven sages? I wonder where they got that shit from. Anyways, Zelda has memorable characters in every game. Groose from Skyward Sword, the King of Red Lions from The Wind Waker, Minna from Twilight Princess, and... Not nah, fuck this guy. But anyways, each game has a good number of NPCs with their own life and stories. This is especially present in Majora's Mask. One particular set of characters I'd like to focus on, whom are my personal favorites, are Anju and Cafe. Anju and Cafe are a couple who will soon be married after the Carnival of Time. However, Cafe was transformed into a child by the Skull Kid and had his wedding mask stolen. After helping him retrieve the mask, he returns to Anju after having been away from her for a very long time. When the world is drawing near its end, they decide to meet the end together and enjoy what little time they have left in each other's arms, rather than attempt to flee the inevitable. That side quest to Majora's Mask touched a lot of fans and is certainly one of the most memorable. Alright, let me lead off with some locations right at Data 5. First off, Hyrule. The land that holds the most history of the series. In each game, Hyrule is altered to keep the series fresh while being able to focus on the events that unfold in each generation. It's also Termina, which some have theorized to be based on the five stages of grief, the island of Koalint, which has a f***ing egg on top and only exists in the dream of the windfish, and so on. The landscape for each location is nothing short of beautiful and always provides an adventurous atmosphere. Of course, the atmosphere depends on what is happening in the story at the time. Take, for example, Ikana. It's the land of the dead. An icon of your partner senses a thirst for blood looming in the land. These are demons from an age long past whose souls are trapped and restless. Ho oh, ho! And don't even get me started on the music. The music in Icona helped bring out that creepy ass atmosphere ad. In fact, the music for every location in Zelda helps bring out its atmosphere, adventurous or not. Bro, did you just say an island with an egg on top? Did like Big Bird pop one out on top of the volcano? Or am I missing something here? Anyways. Pokemon is known for their locations, bruh. We literally classify the games into generations, and each generation represents the region it withholds. The established regions throughout the series are Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alola, and Galar in the upcoming Gen 8. Each region is filled with caves, oceans, grass fields, mountains, and towns and cities to be explored by the player. Hidden Pokeball items are also scattered throughout the world in each game, and no game's region is the same as the other. In fact, when you look at Alola, the region from the Sun and Moon games, this region is the only region to feature trials rather than gyms. And the region is made up of four islands, plus one artificial island. Additionally, Soul Silver slash Heart Gold was an amazing entry to the franchise, and this game actually featured both Johto and Kanto in one game. And this game was a trailblazer for many of the future Pokemon games that followed. Pokemon got the cool spots and locations, my boy. Wow. Well. There are approximately 35 mainline Pokemon games, but if you're really trying to count all the spin-offs too, like Pokemon Dungeon, Pokemon Ranger, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Conquest, uh, uh, Pokemon Stadium, and so on and so forth, it's really up to opinion. Many argue, myself included, that Black and White is the best game in the series due to its standout story. However, Others are fans of the classics such as Silver and Gold, or even Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Or maybe you're trying to take it back to when you were eating Lunchables and watching Nickelodeon every day, and your favorite games are Blue, Green, Red and Yellow, the classics. Everybody seems to have their own respective choice for the best game in the series, and considering there are so many fitting of that title, it truly shows how many solid entries the franchise withholds. 
Yeah, well, there's approximately 35 main levels. Shut the fuck up. Zelda has over 18 games, and unlike Shitty Mon, each entry has a standout story, is great in quality, and leaves the player hyped for more. Some may argue Ocarina of Time is the best game. Some would say Breath of the Wild. And others would even say Majora's Mask. I would say that. Now, I ain't a little hoe, so I never ate no Lunchables. I always ate chicken nuggets, watch Ed and Nettie, then hops on some Majora's Mask to explore my favorite world of them all. Of course, this is all just like based on opinion and preference from the players around the world. That's just a few of all the games. Sorry, but Zelda takes a W in this category too, much like it did in all the others. Everywhere I go, I rarely see any Pokemon stuff, nor do I see like many people with Pokemon apparel. Zelda, on the other hand, though, has special stuff everywhere. Should I even bring up Symphony of the Goddess, the worldwide annual music tour dedicated to Zelda? Oh, shoot, I don't think fake Tittymon has that. Not to mention Zelda revolutionized gaming as a whole with Ocarina of Time. I mean, come on, it even has its own history book. Yo. Yo. Last time I checked, ain't nobody on the streets saying, Ayo, let's battle in Zelda. Ayo, let's trade our Zelda ma. Get out of here with that shit, bro. You ain't seen people with Pokemon apparel on? On ja, you gonna get it now. Do I really have to argue on this? Oh my god. Sorry, bud, but I know Pokemon got this category in the bag. Pokemon is famous worldwide, centering in Japan, bursting in the United States, reaching Europe, Australia. Damn, this franchise is probably even popular with them penguins down in Antarctica, bro. Between the games, the shows, the trading cards, the clothes and merch, the plushies, hell, Pikachu himself even flies in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade every single year. I know Princess Zelda nor Link ain't got no float in that parade. Pokemon is a cultural phenomenon and clearly is loved by people of all ages all across the world. Yeah, I'm just gonna end it there. Mike drop. Well, Caramel Guy, I think we don't went over everything we could possibly go over. Or at the very least, the most important shit. <sighs> Agreed. I guess all we can do now is just wait for the comments to roll in, and you know, they'll probably start roasting our asses. But hopefully they pick a side. May the best chump win. May the best chump win. Harry Potter headass. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Again, check out Lazify's channel, he's an amazing content creator. And of course, put your vote down in the comments. Which is the superior franchise, Zelda or Pokemon? Stay radical my boys and girls. Thank y'all for watching. Peace out. At least I got a normal hairline. I come from a town where most of the people are so close minded. They go into school and they work in a job, but they don't even like it. I won't be put in a box. Nobody.